your love is kind. Can you lift your hands? Everybody the clarity. Your love Today we just want to say, why are my prayers not answered? Very, very simple thing. A question we ask a lot. Thank you, Dari. You know that you are still on duty. Very simple question we ask a lot. We don't ask our pastors because they will defend God. We only ask quietly on my, our pillows as we cry, why are my prayers not answered? After all these years, why does it seem as if God is not hearing me? I'm going to run through some reasons we should know. Then we go to the reason that we're ready to do something about today. Do you get what I'm saying? The reasons that we should know, we will make mental adjustments about it. It doesn't take long for someone to adjust in their heart what they should do. First reason why our prayers are not answered, because it's not God's will. We ask for things that are just not his will. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we hear, ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that if he heareth us, we have the petitions that we've desired of him. Now, asking for a child is totally God's will. Anything that has been said expressly in the word of God is God's will. And you can ask for it. All right? Uh, getting married is God's will. Those ones are very clear. Mm? Having money to send your child to school is God's will. Having a happy married life is God's will. We don't need to go there. Another thing is agenda misalignment. Number two. James 4, 3, when your agenda is not aligned with God's agenda, it says you ask that you might receive, that you may spend it on your lusts. Now, lust does not mean sleeping with a man. I already said, I see you when I was acknowledging my mentees from Lagos. So when we say lust, it's not about sleeping with a man. Lust in that place is sensual desires. That means the desires that satisfy the five senses. It looks good. It tastes good. I like the feel. People will praise me because I have it, you know. You could want to buy a house because you want to leave there and then you can buy it because you want to pepper them. Pepper them is the, is the lost. Do you get it? So, uh -huh. so, gender misalignment. Like Hannah, at a point when she was asking God for a son. Thank you so much for that. God bless you. When she was asking God for a son, it was really pepper them. Answer Penina for me and let her know that I'm not barren. She continued. It didn't work until her Agenda and God's agenda became the same. So she aligned quickly. God, I'll give you this child. You want to take it. That was number one. Two, she submitted. That's James 4, 7. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. There's no point trying to resist the devil where you yourself are not submitted. There's no point. There's no point. You can't cast out devils when you're eating with devils. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You can't leave your boyfriend's house to come to church in the morning and expect God to be answering your prayers sharp, sharp. If he's doing it, he's actually just... <laughs> a young lady in Canada, when I finished praying for her, she sent me a text and she was like, my feet are still burning after you anointed me. This was days later. This was Tuesday. It's, they're still burning. I don't know what to do. And it's worse when I pray. Should I be afraid? You know... That's, and I found out that she lives in her boyfriend's house and they have a baby together. That is the mercy of God calling you to repentance. He's not endorsing you. You see, you have to be very careful. He's not endorsing you. He's letting you know that I love you in spite of, but do something about it. Do you understand? So the fact that you are still in Alaji's house and God is blessing you there, you know, if Alaji is your husband, I'm not going there. Please do. You are okay. Pray for Alaji. Can he come for the next summit? I'm inviting him. But, <laughs> but if otherwise, you know what I'm saying. So James 4, 7, you also submit. And also, you obey. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 6. Having in readiness to fulfill all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. The word is complete. Complete is very, very, very important. Verse 6, complete. It means, the word in Greek means, when you say Greek, it shows that you really study. So allow me a few Greek words, eh? So that we can separate the girls from the, the women. So the, the Greek means that it is full, it is complete. It is crammed full. She came all the way from Lagos, so you have to excuse her. She takes care of that baby, especially if you want a baby, clap for her. Yeah. God bless you. All right. That is clapping so ferociously. Marry first. Just marry first. So when your own obedience is complete, it's crammed full. Do you understand? 
That means when you, not when you begin to obey, but when it is done completely. Having done all to stand, stand there for. Thank you. So alignment, submission, it is God's will. Our priorities are the same with God. We've run through very, very quickly the things that cause delayed prayers. And then a very interesting one that we don't think about, to unveil hidden things. Sometimes our prayers are delayed because God wants an unveiling of something that is hidden. Example, you lose your earring, right? And then when you're looking for, so that's even too much, you lose your pen. And when you're looking for your pen, you find your earring that had been lost under the bed. Now the pen is not, well, it's Biko, but the earring is Cartier of Van Cleef. Do you understand? Say, yeah, the pen got missing so you could find the earring. So there you are thinking, I need a baby. I need a baby. No, God is saying, ah, that you are not dead. That your entire family is not wasted. This is the reason you must plummet, look to the end of it. The Bible says in Proverbs 25 verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, the honor of kings it is to search it out. Now let me give you the real example again. Saul, his donkeys got lost. And he thought his problem was lost donkeys. But when he looked for the donkeys and couldn't find it, he went looking for Samuel. His servant said, let's go and look for the prophet. It's very good to be nice to your servants because in scripture, at least two servants gave good advice. There was Saul's servant. There was Naaman's maid. Good. So he went to the prophet and the prophet said, this is not a donkey matter. I'm to crown you king. So you see that problem that is stressing you, oppressing you is to crown you queen. But you are thinking to disgrace me. No, it will show you the path to the throne as it did unto Saul. I'm sure God just whispered unto those donkeys, run away. That's it. And then you are thinking, why am I not married? It was when I was praying about marriage at the tender age of 27. Which in our own days meant you were on the shelf. Meanwhile, people have been proposing to me since I was 16 because I entered university at 14, so they did not know my age. And God was saying no, 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 no to all of the proposals. By the way, how many answers are there to a proposal? Three. Who said three? God bless that. I want to see you. What are the answers? Uh -huh. Eh? I want, wait. Thank you. Can you give her a hand? And then this girl is arguing with me, a young lady, that no, there are only two answers to pro proposal. Guys, there are only two answers to your proposal. No, no. There's a third one. There's wait. There's, let me pray about it. Let me, you have thought about it too. Let me too think about it. Oh, that yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Before, <laughs> before they say it, you knew they were going to say it. You too, you know easy women, you know them. And you are usually bored. Tell the truth now, you know here in the room, you are bored because men are hunters, let them hunt. They sent me to you to tell you that they are tired, that your desperation is boring. <laughs> it's true. One man said, we cannot even chase them again. As you are chasing, she turns and she's chasing you. <laughs> and everything you chase runs away from you. So you chase a guy, he runs. That's what it, he picks race. You understand? Hey, you still love me. I'm helping you if you are single. It does not matter if you are fine or not. The way men see fine is completely different from the way we see fine. We'll talk about it some other time when we have time. We don't have time today. Time is really going. But I need to put all this uh, jara on top so that you know you can get the full package once your face is not as if you are sucking a lemon a man will think you are fine if you are smiling yes <laughs> smile when you smile no matter how it is a man thinks you are fine because actually you're convivial that's what he's seeing a smiling face a jolly a fantastic attitude his friends might say she's not fine he doesn't see it and they're not the ones marrying you so what, what concerns you once he's happy, he's happy. Uh -huh. All right. How did we get on that topic now? <laughs> yes, sir, more than two answers, sir. So when this gets on YouTube, have you heard? There's, wait, let me to pray. Ah. Because the days are coming when you get married that the man will wonder if he actually proposed to you himself. <laughs> At that time, you remember that. You gave him time to go and be sure. 
If he wants to withdraw his proposal, let him withdraw it now. Not in 10 years' time. Mm-hmm. Why are you laughing? We are married. That's what we're telling you for 24 years. The glory of God. Bill Graham's wife, they asked her, have you ever considered divorce? She says, she divorced? No. No. But murder. Murder. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, she's telling the truth. <laughs> telling the truth. Bill Graham's wife, because I think she's not holy. The sixth reason is contending altars. Altars that are contending with you. So you are praying, but something else is fight, actually fighting the prayer. And then you're wondering, what is an altar? I had to check very well to find out that there were many altars in the New Testament before I could start, you know, talking about this years ago. In fact, in front of the throne of God, there's an altar, Revelations 9, 13. And Jesus begins to talk about altars himself in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, which means he expects that there will continually be altars. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh Uh-huh. So Jesus is not the last sacrifice. He's the ultimate, not the last. Do you get it? Okay, good. Those who studied English class for yourself, you know the difference. So an altar is a platform for legal spiritual transactions. They're illegal spiritual transactions, but they're legal ones, right? And an altar is a platform for such. Even if you check your dictionary, it will say an altar is a a place where sacrifices are made. Straight away. Pesaros, they know it's there. An altar is a legal platform for invocation. Invocation. And invocation is when you are calling on something to manifest, to show up. Get it to, to show up. This is where you do not do the Abuja thing of pretending that you were born in Abuja. You came from somewhere. So let's go together. Have you seen like those masquerades or something where they're, when they're about to come out, they begin to chant the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, if you're so tush, at least you see New Age. Don't you see New Age? How about Buddhists, Hindus? How about um? What they're doing is they're invoking something to come out. So they continue with consistency, one, two, fervency, three, yieldedness. Did you see what I said? Consistency, fervency, and yieldedness. They don't dance. Shangot worshippers don't dance like this, like you dance in church. You reign, you ancient song and skank. And God is asking Gabriel, what is she saying? (laughs) Katosh, katosh. The people who mean it are sweating as they're doing it. And they get their results. <laughs> they get their results. An altar is a legal platform that creates a portal between the spirit and the physical realm. A portal is a gate. A gate is a transition point between two realities or two realms. Who watches Avengers? I do. It's okay. You can watch. Do you notice that Dr. Strange suddenly appears? He passes through a portal. There are people that you work with who do the same thing. When they go to bed, they don't sleep throughout the night. They travel. Yeah, they do. They travel. It's only Christians who do not have altars. Everybody else knows that they're supposed to have something. The ultimate sacrifice is Christ. I haven't changed that. So I'm telling you what an altar is. Why are altars contending with us when we did not disturb them? This is a huge question because nice people like me and Jibs wonder that we did nothing. Our hearts are clean. And some go and add stupidity to niceness. We are nice, we're not stupid. They add stupidity to niceness by thinking that since I didn't do nothing, nothing can happen to me. <laughs> hey, the way your mother did, Dinka, and your grandmother. Because there's something called genealogy. The same way your parents left you a house in Maitama and you moved in very confidently, they left you some other things. They did. And medicine recognizes it. So they tell you there's an 85% chance of you developing breast cancer. If your mom, your auntie, your... Who did you offend? Why? Why? 
do altars fight? So I want you to just settle it that it's not anything you did, but it's a battle that you are born into and you must fight it. That's just it. Once you win. Because there's a spirit called Amalek. And the original owner of that spirit is Satan. Amalek is not really a tribe. It's just a kind of spirit. And I, because I want to be very fast, I will have to describe what it is. The first time we see Amalek, Amalek is Exodus chapter 17 verse 8. It just says, then came Amalek and fought Israel in Rephidim. I'm like, what was before them? You go and check, nothing. Nobody looked for Amalek's trouble. Nobody called Amalek's name. Amalek just came. Just the same way you just wake up sometimes and you wake up with an issue you know nothing about. You marry into an issue you knew nothing about. And you're wondering. Then came. Check all before. You cannot see anything Israel did to Amalek. They had just finished some... Anyway, moving fast. You now see that the first time Amalek is mentioned is in Exodus chapter 36 verse 12. Sorry, Genesis 36 12. Thank you so much, technical. They're doing so well now. Genesis 36 12. And you know what? We see that Amalek is... The son of the baby mama of Esau's uh-huh. and Tim now was concubine, aka baby mama, to Eliphaz, Esau's son, aka side son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of other Esau's wives, so he was born of a concubine. And we know the story of Esau and Jacob. The fact that Esau really believed that Jacob stole his birthright. News flash, he did not steal it. There was a contract. Give me your birthright. You like pottage. I like pottage more than my birthright. Here is pottage. Take birthright. Transaction concluded. And then you now wake up one morning and decide that actually you like your birthright. Oh no, it doesn't work that way. I have taken it. And when the mother saw that that's what they wanted to do, she said no. And she helped. Do you understand? Really and truly, it didn't steal anything. You need to watch what your mouth says. Single people, watch what your mouth says. Rings don't jump onto people's fingers. They say, I do. It's that mouth. That's it. So, we see that Amalek is a spirit that says, why do you have what is legally, what is mine? See, if you have a friend that you cannot find out why she just beefs you, you have begged her, you have pleaded, you have done everything, let her go. Because she cannot cope with the next level you are going in life. Now, there are different types of envy. There's envy that the person wants to be you. When the person wants to be you, go out. Your Bible will say, yare and brain. You need to yare and brain. Because what I'm saying now is very different from somebody's envying you because of a car. Envying you because of a... That's a totally different kind of envy. They can't say why they're envying you. Smile when you're looking at me. When the envy... Uh, it's true. Unless you are the one I'm talking about. The envy that we are saying is an envy of she wants to be you. Is your husband she wants? Is your shoes she wants? Is your children she wants? If you want all boys, she's happy to have all boys. If, there are people like that. There is no, you cannot win. You walk away from that situation. Do you understand? It is Amalek. It's a spirit. Am I communicating to somebody? I'm making sense. All right. Now Satan has that same problem with me. And what is the problem? Satan wanted to be in the image of God. That's his real plan in life. All the struggle he struggled in heaven was to be in the image of God. And God did not allow. Threw him out of heaven and then turned around. Don't forget that the Bible says, who makes his angel spirits, his ministers of flame of fire. So Satan is a flame of fire. We're talking of a beautiful creature. We're talking about creatures that are magnificent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then God turned around and looked under his feet. And saw clay. And then took clay and formed it into me and you. Satan was still thinking, what was going on? Don't forget it was already around. And then God took the clay and breathed into it. And put all his power and glory into the clay. And said, everything I have is yours. You are in my image. If you are Satan too, it will pay you. Mm. You have to understand that Satan is not going to have a truce with you. He's fight to finish it to pain you which is why always he goes after those in the image of god and he wants your worship yeah yeah yeah. he wants your worship because then he gets what belongs to you he said to jesus don't go through the process i have shortcuts just bow down and worship him 
me and everything you are looking for, I will give you. Look, there are people who are ready to give you the child you are waiting for now. It's just that there will be a proviso. One of my friends, you know, at that time, she had this baby who had a very funny deficiency. Very, it, it should happen one in a million times. It happened to her twice. So, yeah, she was married to some guy then. I will not give names. But it was, well, first child had like an immune deficiency, very bad one. And uh, she said she was crying in the hospital. Anything, I will do anything to make sure that this boy lives. And at night, a spirit appeared to her in a dream. They appeared to her and said, you said you were going to give anything for this child. Are you ready to do what we say? Somehow, because it's very strange. Without even knowing, the spirit of God helped her even in that situation. And she got up and said, no, the boy died. Yeah, the boy died. But the daughter did, that she had again, that now had that situation, did not die. She has graduated now. She's in England. Okay. That is, she had yet another child who had yet again this thing, but it did not happen. But I'm letting you know that there are people who are, sorry, there are entities that are watching to see if you'll be desperate enough. If you like that thing more than God, so that they can offer you. It's very important what I'm telling you. Because... There's always a proviso. There's always something. And then he said to Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this glory. Why? I'm giving the second reason why they're altars. They're altars because altars are a place of power and they and provision. And you will always worship what provides for you. Yeah. Hello, you will. If your husband is your source of provision, you will worship the guy. God is not in a bit too vigorously. But if God is your source of provision, so Satan knew it was a no-brainer. Once he can give Jesus all the glory of the earth, he will worship him. God, who do you want to worship? He's a person who provides for you. Third reason, or maybe even fourth, Satan is generational in what he's looking for. And this is where we're going, really. He's not happy that only you worships him. He wants your children that are not yet born. So a lot of places where we come from, in Nigeria, the, home, the meaning of Niger is Niger area, the area of the Niger. Niger is a river. Niger means dark. It's also another name for Dagon, which happens to be, yeah, yeah, which happens to be a mailman. So a lot of the females in Nigeria have issues. I cannot explain today, it's another day, but if you think it's not true, check your life, you know. You know. They have issues that they did not cause. They were just born into the battle. Also because women are gates. You can write it down. A woman is the only one who is a transition point between the physical and the spiritual. Men can sow the seed and oftentimes forget that they sowed it. But the woman will carry it. I'm not dissing men. I love, I have two beautiful boys and I'm married to a man. You need to let it be know you're married to a man because it's not a given these days, you know. So, um, why are you laughing? After Jeff Bezos and his wife split up, somebody was like, you know what? I'm just letting you know I'm ready to ditch my husband at any time. The person said, oh, why do, are you trying to toast Jeff Bezos? Who said, who's toast, toasting Jeff Bezos? I'm toasting the wife. Ah, madam, I'm available. <laughs> anyway, seriously, a woman is a portal, a woman is a gate. That's why your having children is fought so seriously. Because you are the only one who can bring another destiny to this world. Delayed marriage is fighting children. It's not about marriage. It's about the child. Uh, who cares? Married 200 times. Who cares? The idea is to make you marry so late that to have that child will be impossible. It's the next righteous generation that the enemy is really fighting. When you begin to get clarity about what the battle is about and that is not about you at all, freedom is coming. Oh, yeah. So it's not about, you know, it's not about my child or not my child. You know that God giving you a child, right, is to use you as a display of his glory. God not giving you one either, if it's not him, you're not having one. It's also a letter Satan is writing to the entire world that see as having God, God cannot even one child, one child, one single sperm cell and one egg, God can do. 
That's what she's trying to say. So when we begin to pray, you want to tell God that show the devil what it is that you can do. Do you get what I'm saying? Show what it is that you, and it does not matter what they say. It is low spam count, no spam count. It doesn't matter. I like the way God does things. When he was taking Sarah through what he was taking her through, I'm sure she didn't know that today she'll be the hero she is to, heroine she is to us. Because no matter what the doctor says to you, you can go back and say, Sarah was dead. Abraham was dead. Two corpses had a baby. At least my husband and I walked in here with our two legs. And we have hope. Do you see? God will use you to give somebody hope. Amen. Yes, your story is the next testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Generational. I was saying it. He now makes people come and promise not just themselves, but their children's children. We will protect you. In this your hometown of maybe is Ifewara or Igondu or Igando or I don't know what it is. So will you protect us? Yes. The enemies will never be able to enter your territory. You say yes. Yes, just that we want all your female children. All of them know just the first daughter. And then we come and then we get born again and we say we're not serving the idols. The idols say, you are not serving who? <laughs> who are you not serving? No, no, this is what really goes on. So we enter into what we call the curse of a broken covenant. Do you want to write that? So you broke a covenant, and because there were curses behind that covenant, if you don't do this, this will happen. The spirit comes after you. It makes sense. Please understand the spirit's point of view. If every member of your family does not serve it again, who will be in his shrine? How will the priest eat? Ah. So the first thing he does is makes an example of you. This is what happens to those who don't serve us. But he has failed. Amen. Oh, he has failed. You will deal with them, then you deal with the priest. That's what we're going to do today. Are you getting it now? What is really going on? So you don't walk off and say, well, I'm born again in my own case. Then I look back. I know how to deal with, yes, know how to deal with those who think that you've abandoned them. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. What are the signs and the symptoms of an altar being in place? Barrenness. I'll tell you why. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Barrenness is not physical only. It means you start a business, it's not working. You do this, it's not working. Anything that is contrary to fruitfulness, sign that there's something in place. Jesus Christ got angry two times in scripture. Do you remember? Only one time did he curse. Do you remember? He got angry, he beat people. The second time, he cursed the fig tree because the fig tree had not, no fruit. So it's not of God not to have fruit. Not to have food is not God. For the business not to work is not God. It's not God. It's not God. He's not teaching you something. It's not God. No, I just need to let you know. Extended periods like that is not God. Abortions. Miscarriages. Seasonal problems in cycles. Anything that forms a pattern. Pattern. Once it forms a pattern, eh, the people in my, my women in my family usually get married at least twice. It's a pattern. It happened the first time. We won't talk. The second time, wake up. Third time, ah. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Stagnation. Then inexplicable access. Demonic access. Inexplicable. Take my praise, oh Lord, take my praise, oh Lord, my altar. Stay on the keyboard when I'm done calling you, oh Lord, my altar is calling you. The thing is, a lot of us don't have altars. Stay on the keyboard, please, if you don't mind, with that song. We don't have altars. I'm going to talk about altars a little bit more than you understand. What is an altar? An altar can be a monument. It can be an institution. Elijah put together an altar. Remember, in 1 Kings chapter 18, it was a monument. It can be an institution. It can be a place. An altar, when I say it can be a place, you look at... Genesis chapter 28, I'm putting off my timer. Genesis chapter 28. Jacob goes to bed. 
And when he's asleep, angelic activity starts. I'm going to this because it's very important for you to understand. Then he woke up and he said, and all, he said, surely this is a house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Two things he said loaded there. A house of God. It says the in the King James, but in YLT, it is a house. That means there's several. Altars can be people, is what he's saying. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, that we are the temple. And that house word is bayith. Bayith means in Hebrew, temple, house. It is the habitation of God. So if you carry God, you become an altar. You do. Samuel was an altar. So when Saul came to him, his problems were solved. So, are you listening? She looked at me and fell. There was another lady too. We're having a meeting in Muzon Center as usual. So my associates had, I should saw they were making noise in the corner. So I moved near, checked, and what she did, looked at me, looked at me, and fell. When I was passing by, nobody knew I was passing by, because if you know Muzon Center in Lagos, there's a pit, right? She was in the pit lying there, and she rose up. And she said, do you know who I am? It wasn't her. It was another voice speaking. I could hear the voice. I said, who are you? He said, I'm the queen of the coast. She got delivered that day. They're different types of people. We can all wear shoes and jeans together. We did not come to this place by the same journey. Mm -mm. You don't know my path. Are you listening to me? This is a gate of heaven. Every house of God is meant to be a gate of heaven. You do not go to a church because it's fine or the pastor is fine or the music is good. If it is not a gate, you are wasting your time. There must be illumination. If it is a gate, there must be revelation. There must be encounters. There must be direction. You must be able to leave church in a season and know what God is telling you to do. We've gotten to a place that you don't even know when the Holy Ghost is moving anymore. Your neighbor is flat on the floor. You are like, Believe me, I'm telling you, I'm using donkwa to eat kileshi. And then, maybe I will fix my weave on. And you're wondering why nothing is changing in your life. <clears throat> Physics says, every object remains in a state of rest until it is acted upon by an equal and opposite force. That means the force that must move something out of the way must be stronger than the thing. And your desire must be as hot. You don't come to God. Well, maybe it is today. And maybe it may not be today. It is one of us are dying here. It's not easy. One of us are dying here. If something does not change in my life. Jacob, he, his change came when he got to Peniel. And he said... Remember what he did at the house of God in Bethel? He walked off and he was merry and decided what to do. He did not ask for his change. But the day he got to Peniel and he said, he was struggling with God. He said, let me go. He said, I will not let you go unless you change my situation. And I can usually tell, even from the mind, the body language of people. One of my mentees is here. I won't tell you her name. So, the way she was behaving before all Lagos, first she started sowing some seeds, like, I thought, what are you looking for? I said, you know what, sit in front. Then I said, I don't want, you know, people come for meetings for different reasons. They come to see what clothes we wore, who came, who did not come, you know, or jewelry people are wearing. Don't sit where people will disturb you. Sit in front. She sat in front. Where she could do battle and do warfare. Suffice to say, she sent me a testimony within like three weeks that God, I didn't know God was this intentional. I said, of course, it's very intentional. When you leave God, let me see, anybody who really believes that God exists, ask questions. So it's not a sign of faith that you don't ask God. Why? It means you don't believe he's there at all to answer. That's the truth. So you just keep quiet. Did anybody get what I just said? Because if you really believe 
when you pray a certain way, you will change the way you pray and say, okay, maybe you haven't been hearing that one. Can we ask why? We're rounding up because we need to pray now. <laughs> Take my praise, oh God. Take my, my praise, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. message like this because let me tell you the bible says that say persecution arises because of the word if you load yourself with the word do nothing with it you are just looking for trouble i'm just helping you just helping you here mm -hmm. what are the components of the covenant i want that keyboard there's somebody is promising and there's somebody they're promising it to the lawyers are doing it right there must be thank you god bless you there must be consideration. That means something, you know, must pass that is tangible and material. Now, blood is the currency of covenants. Blood, blood, blood. I remember when God first showed me this thing. I was, I, I wasn't really excited to share it because God said to me, "If you really want to look at how to, you know, strike a covenant, that what someone who needs a really strong covenant, what they do." You don't take an old man that's 90. You take a young baby, fresh, has done nothing wrong, innocent. That's why there are baby factories in Nigeria where they take the baby raw the day it is born. Kill it, pound it, make so. Somebody use it to bathe. No, I'm just letting you know how it is. What they're saying is that everything that should ever have happened in the life of that baby for good, as I'm using this soap, let it be mine. You are going to work with these people is what I'm telling you. And you are bidding for the same contracts and you have no altar. Zero. I will teach you about favor. We'll pray about it. Favor is a force. It's like a smell. It's like a perfume in the spirit realm. Disfavor is the opposite. It's like a stench. People just don't like you and you don't know why. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Favor is like a perfume that draws and attracts. <sighs> How do I deal with the covenant? The same way it was created. I said, you need a promise, you need a promise. So you need to say something. When you get to an altar, you must actually say something. Like you said, I do to your wife. You must say something. Two, there must be sacrifice. Now that sacrifice could be material, could be uh, money, could be, but it must be blood. Now let me explain to you what it means by it must be blood. Your time that you're spending here is blood. Because it's part of your life. It will never come back again. Ever. It is blood. The money you give is blood. You know. You know yourself. You know why. Because you know how you feel it. As if it's kidney donation. You feel it. You feel it. Because when you work and work, what they give you back in exchange for your work is money. Do you get what I'm saying? Three. Hebrews 13, 15 says, the fruit of your lips, a sacrifice of praise. Praise in a hard place is sacrifice. Not praise when God has done it. Praise before he does yes. it is a sacrifice. Praise, praise exactly the way you will praise because we are going to do it. Exactly the way you will praise when he has now done it. I remember when I was praying to get married, it was one Wednesday. I just started singing. I sang, I danced shake in church Wednesday. It was now time to get married. It was now Thanksgiving. I just couldn't 
dance too much. I dance the dance. Oh Lord, my altar is calling me. Oh God, there must be a sacrifice of your time, of your praise, of your money of your tangibles, of communicating with the saints, that's sharing what you want, you have. God said, with these sacrifices, I'm well pleased. Hebrews 13, 16. So, there must be that to deal. You must bring your word against the word that was spoken. Do you understand? You will be barren. You need to say, I will not be. Yes. And they said, the reason why you will be is because a whole goat was killed. You say, this is the blood of Jesus. I said to people, you say you drink the blood of human beings. I drink the blood of God. We are not on the yes, same level. Yes, yes. We cannot be on the same level. We cannot be moving on the same level. It's not possible. There must be your sacrifice of prayer. Do you understand? It's called. Say to God, I can't do anything without you. It's submission. Two, it should come with fervency. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh -uh. Why? Because prayer is the only authorized system by which God can intervene into the affairs of men. E Ezekiel 22, 30, 31, he said, I sought for one to stand in the gap. There was none. Because there was none, my indignation fell. We have whole families. Remember I said God is doing something about families. I feel the power of God. Yes. He said, uh, families is what I want to save here. It's not just you. When you save, you save for yourself and your children's children. Are you listening? That that thing must never again happen. There's some families, the men die at 40. There's some families, it's the women that must feed the men. There's some families, where you reach the peak, back up, something happens. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And he said, because nobody stood in the gap for that family. Nobody said it must not happen. I let it happen. Because the Bible says, the heavens, the heavens of heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to the children of men. Which means the same way your landlord cannot say, because I built the house. He will just walk in into your house without invitation. God cannot. That's why he said, I behold, I stand at the door and knock. He can only knock. Will you let him in? Will you not let him in? No matter if it's God or not, you must invite God into your situation. That means today you open your mouth. We must have that word to come against. We must have that sacrifice there. The sacrifice of prayer, the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of our money, whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Imarama. Aren't you glad that God is good? And that he has given us a way out of the pit where there is no water. We did not know that they put us in. You were seated on the throne.